Action potentials, or APs, run in circuits from one neuron to another, like holiday lights. A synapse is a junction where APs are transferred. In your body, 100 billion neurons have more than 100 trillion synapses. Alcohol, caffeine, nicotine, and a lot of drugs like Ritalin and Prozac all regulate synaptic transmission, which controls our thinking, moods, movements, and much more. Let's build a chemical synapse. The presynaptic and postsynaptic neurons are separated by the synaptic cleft. The APs cannot simply jump across the cleft. They use chemicals called neurotransmitters, for example, acetylcholine, or ACH, stored in the synaptic vesicles of the synaptic terminal. Synaptic transmission has three steps, three signals, and three responses. Step one. The signal is the AP reaching the synaptic terminal. In response, calcium ion channels in the presynaptic membrane open and calcium ions flow into the synaptic terminal from high to low concentration areas. Step 2. Now the signal is the calcium ions. In response, synaptic vesicles fuse with the presynaptic membrane and release ACH into the synaptic cleft. Step 3. Here the signal is ACH. It binds to the receptors in the postsynaptic membrane. In response, sodium ion channels open and sodium ions flow into the postsynaptic neuron from high to low concentration areas, depolarizing the membrane to the threshold and generating a postsynaptic AP. Let's review the steps. Step 1. The signal is the presynaptic AP. The response is the calcium ion inflow. Step 2. The signal is the calcium ions in the synaptic terminal. The response is the release of ACH into the synaptic cleft. Step 3. The signal is ACH. The response is the sodium ion inflow, which depolarizes the membrane and may lead to a postsynaptic AP. However, not every presynaptic AP is transmitted, and not every transmission is going to last. In the next video, we'll discuss the final step of the synaptic transmission and its termination.